The newly elected U.S. President Donald Trump is already shaping the country's policy on the main directions, Ukraine and Israel. This was reported by Bloomberg. With phone calls to the leaders of both nations, and another expected with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Trump's victory, and the possibility he will seek major policy changes, is reverberating in both countries and well beyond. One former Trump administration official, who asked not to be identified discussing private assessments, said the president-elect will have an immediate head start thanks to the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. U.S. adversaries may change their behavior in advance, the person said, some deterred by the threat of U.S. retaliation, and others seeking to exploit their remaining leverage before President Joe Biden leaves office. That's being felt most acutely in Ukraine. Trump promised during the campaign to solve the Ukraine crisis before Inauguration Day, and President Volodymyr Zelensky is already scrambling to catch up. Tesla CEO and Trump supporter Elon Musk was in the room for Zelensky's call with Trump this week, according to a person familiar with the matter. Musk has previously advocated for a negotiated solution in which Ukraine gives up some of its territory. Trump's election has changed the Ukrainian rhetoric and planning in their views about negotiations, said Shelby Majid, deputy director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Majid said Ukraine is moving in the direction, knowing that Trump has won, of accepting that negotiations are a reality. A former Trump administration official told the publication that the elected president will benefit from the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. According to the publication, the authorities of this country are beginning to realize the inevitability of negotiations. Trump is expected to pursue a policy of reluctance in the fight for territories occupied by Russia. Israel, however, will benefit the most from Trump's presidency. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is a longtime ally of Trump. Trump has already publicly stated that he will give Israel more freedom to prepare possible strikes on Iran, especially if Tehran decides to change its nuclear concept, the publication noted. The fact of an electoral result is itself reassuring for some countries, which were preparing for either outcome but unable or unwilling to move forward without knowing who would lead the US and in what direction. Former NATO Commander General Ben Hodges said that he does not rule out war with Russia in a few years. However, a conflict cannot be ruled out and its probability largely depends on us. Firstly, on preparation, because preparing for such a conflict is absolutely correct. This is the basis of effective deterrence. We must be able to show. Secondly, support for Ukraine is also extremely important. As long as we do not allow Ukraine to fall, we will not have to expect a war with Russia, he stated. When asked how the election of a new president in the US might affect Europe, he said Kamala Harris was the best option. It is true that Trump cannot withdraw from NATO because the administration has already taken steps to protect itself from that option. But Trump can take other actions. Kamala Harris is a guarantee of aid to Ukraine and of NATO's stability. He was also asked whether Europe would be able to defend itself against Russia without the help of the United States. Of course, just look at the basic statistics on economic and demographic potential. The European NATO countries are many times larger than Russia. The potential here is definitely huge. However, to use it effectively, you need will. And that is the problem, because so far, I do not see a strong enough will in Europe. To create it, we need responsible and strong leaders who can convince societies to unite and understand what a threat Russia represents, he answered. According to the general, while Ukraine is defending itself, Russia has no chance of gathering forces to attack a NATO country. Ukraine has been at war with Russia for 10 years, since it started in 2014. The Russians had many advantages over Ukraine. They used everything they could, and we are in a situation where they can control only about 20% of its territory. They have suffered huge human and technical losses, and their economy functions only thanks to the support of China and India, which buy Russian raw materials. If the West had supported Ukraine in full force, this war would have ended last year. We could have seriously supported Ukraine so that it would win, and not like now, just so that it does not lose, he answered.
Russian dictator Vladimir Putin has destroyed the country's medical sector in his 20 years in power. The situation is catastrophic. This topic was unexpectedly raised on the air of the pro-government radio station Komsomolskaya Pravda. Propagandists discussed the mass layoffs of medical workers, especially ambulance workers in Russia. People do not want to work because of low salaries and very heavy workloads. Ambulances are scattered all over the country, especially in small towns. The lion's share of our teams can only be called teams conditionally. Instead of two doctors, one doctor often leaves there and he cannot perform resuscitation as required. This is a completely different risk for patients. Our number of teams is 1.5 to 2 times lower than the standard. In rural areas, we do not have medical teams, not to mention resuscitation, psychiatric, obstetric teams. We have never heard of this. The shortage of personnel is huge. Paramedic teams in rural areas work alone. There are no doctors. There are one to two teams for several districts. The route is 200 kilometers or even more. You can wait seven to eight hours and this is not an ambulance at all. The Russian propagandist complained. He also specified that despite the disaster, the new Russian budget did not include funds to increase the salaries of medical workers. Apparently, Putin prefers spending money on killing Ukrainians and destroying a neighboring country rather than improving the lives of Russians. Recall Putin is crowned again for another six years. Legally, he can remain in office until 2036, when he will turn 84. By then, Russia may be even larger, but with fewer people as population decline continues, advanced by wars and with resources depleted as oil and gas supplies dwindle. In such a scenario, Russia will continue to be ruled by a physically declining tyrant, still feared by his timid associates. They have seen what happens to those who cross his path. But Vladimir Putin is not immortal and, in that sense, his time in history is little more than a tick of a clock. Russian troops resumed offensive operations in the area of Pogrebki, Darino, Zeleny, Shlyak and Sudza in the Kursk region. Analysts from Deep State of Ukraine claim that Ukrainian forces are repelling the enemy's counter-offensive in all directions of the Kursk region. The enemy's tactics are standard. The BMP transports infantry to the battlefield, parachutes in and enters the battle. The situation in Kursk region was commented on by the Ukrainian Armed Forces officer Alex on his social network page. According to him, the enemy is currently focusing on the Pogrebki area. However, the day before, Putin's army was missing 10 units of military equipment on this section of the front alone. The public, Bitly, also shared its opinion regarding the new offensive of the Russian armed forces in Kursk region. It refers to the OSINT investigator Kriegsforscher. Allegedly, Putin gave a new order to liberate Kursk region in two to three months, not days. The Ukrainian armed forces were already prepared for a new counter-offensive by the Russian Federation on November the 7th, which is what actually happened. As it turned out, Putin's army recently carried out a rotation in the Lyubimovka area. At the same time, units from the 810th Marine Brigade received 40 new BTR 8-2A, and the enemy's left flank was reinforced with another 5,500 Russian servicemen. In the Pogrebki area, the Ukrainian armed forces positions were attacked by the 83rd Airborne Brigade and the 51st Airborne Regiment. Despite the bad weather, they launched a mechanized attack. The 51st Regiment used five units of military equipment and seven buggies for the attack. As a result, all seven buggies, two BMD-2 and five BMP-3 units, remained on the battlefield. The 83rd Brigade left a T-80 tank and one BMP-3 on the battlefield. The 810th Brigade used 14 BTR 82A vehicles in the attack, 10 of which were destroyed by Ukrainian forces. Alex writes that North Korean soldiers are not yet visible, although they should be somewhere nearby. Let us recall that Ukrainian forces are actively using an old, proven method of fighting against enemy artillery.